Hello, welcome to this DCS AH64D tutorial. In this video, we will cover control setup, specifically for the pilot. All of these videos will be focused on solo pilots utilizing the George AI Copilot Gunner. To begin with, we will go to our Axis commands and bind the classic controls. First is your collective equivalent to something similar to your throttle in a fixed wing. Make sure that you do not have a dead zone or curvature on your collective. The next is your cyclic pitch and roll. For me, I have both of them on a curve of 15. If your stick feels too sensitive, add curve. If it feels too mushy, reduce the curve. Next, you will want to bind focus controller X and Y axis. If you fly an aircraft similar to the F-18, that is effectively your TDC utilized for controlling the cursor on your displays. Next, we will bind our rudder. For me personally, I have a curve of 30 on my rudders. Finally, we will bind both the left and right wheel brakes if you have that available. Moving to the regular button commands, I will start off with what I have on my stick. Firstly, the consent to fire button. I have this on a red weapons release button on my stick. This allows George permission to fire when I tell him to lock up a target. The next thing to bind is your weapons trigger first and second detent. If your stick does not have a two-stage trigger, all you need bound is the second detent. Next, we will bind Symbology Select Switch up and down. I have a hat switch utilized for trim on my stick, and I have the up position on Symbology and the down position on Symbology down. This hat switch has a depress, and I have Symbology Select Switch Depress on that. For the left and right of that hat switch for me, I have the Chaff Dispense button and the Flare Dispense button. You can bind these to whatever is convenient to you. That's just where I have them. Next, I have another hat switch on my stick that is utilized for my force trimmers. You want to make sure you have up, down, left, and right force trim switches. The main thing that you'll be using is force trim up, and that will be used as your force trim for your aircraft. Down is non-functional, left for attitude hold is partially functional, and right for altitude hold is not functional at the time of this video's release. Next, we can bind tail wheel lock slash unlock button depress. I have this on a pinky switch on the back of my stick. On the thumb, uh, thumb hat on my stick, I have my weapon action switch, the WAS. I have up, down, or aft, or back however you describe it, left and right. Right is for missiles, left is for rockets, forward, up is for guns, and back, down, is for aerial modes. Moving off of my stick for now, I still have a castle hat unbound on my stick, if you have one currently, save it. We're going to use it for binding George in a minute. Coming off of my stick and onto my throttle or collective, whatever you have, the first thing that you need to bind is Boresight Polarity Switch, PLRT for Polarity, and Boresight Polarity Switch, B slash S. The next thing to bind if you have a three-way switch available, is PLT NVS mode switch off, norm, or fixed. 
you do not have a three-way available, you could utilize the down or up or simply click the switch in your cockpit. You will also need weapons trigger guard open and close, and this will allow you to fire your gun using your trigger once you are in the air. Those are all of the need-to-haves as far as flying your aircraft. Now let's talk about George. We'll head back to the regular button commands and the castle hat that I described that I still had available on my switch. You're going to need a five-way hat. I will bind the D-press on that hat to George AI Helper Interface Show Hide. Utilizing that same hat switch, I'm going to use the drop down and go to AH64D George AI Helper. All of these keybinds I will put on that same hat switch. So that D press we just bound will be bound to George AI Helper interface hide. Left on the hat for left, right for right, up for up, and back aft down, however you describe it, or the down. Back to the pilot keybinds. Those were all of the need-to-haves, and that is everything you need to operate the Apache in its current state. There are some more nice-to-haves that you could have found, and I will cover some of those now. First, of course, is a rearm refueling window, so you don't have to go through your communications menu. The next is a keybind for your map and for your cockpit views. The next is a keybind to control your FLIR level control knob clockwise and counterclockwise. Next, FLIR game control knob clockwise and counterclockwise. All four of these controls will be utilized for adjusting the brightness and flare levels in your helmet when you have NVS mode enabled. If you wish, you can bind stabilator control switch, nose down, nose up, and the depress. This is not necessary, but if you wish to force the plane into a nose down or nose up orientation, you can utilize these and utilize the depress to put it back to an auto stabilize mode. Auto stabilize stabilator mode. You may also be interested in binding the site select switch or buttons. They do not really have a function at this moment, but that is more of a future proofing for your control bindings. Additionally, you could do an NVS select switch, E, N, V, S, or TADS. One thing I did forget to mention was cursor enter depress. This is effectively your TDC depress if you fly something like an F-18. This is utilized for clicking your cursor on your screens in your aircraft. That is everything as far as controls. Now I will move to the special options. So special AH-64D. Here you can set your cockpits if you have them. I personally use a central position trimmer mode for my cyclic and my pedals. This is where if I have my pedals and my stick in a position to keep the plane steady, I will press up on my force trimmer switch that will force the aircraft to trim into my current control orientation. Then I release my controls back to center and I can then regain control by moving my controls. I find this allows me to have more resolution and control 
or the aircraft. But you may not like this, so feel free to experiment with the other options. These are my other options. I have iHeads monocle visible turned off and the balaclava is turned off. They take up a lot of space in my screen. iHeads is your preference. Um, if you're flying flat screen monitor, it really doesn't matter which one you pick. You'll see it regardless. This is mainly a VR thing. Alrighty. That's all of the controls and setup for the AH-64, in my case at least. Covered some need-to-have controls and some nice-to-haves. Um, feel free to augment this as you see fit and according to your playstyle. Alright, thanks for watching.